Hello, welcome to Revelations of a Delusional Knitter. I'm Angelie Host. This is episode 135, and it is Friday, April 22nd, 2016. Happy Earth Day. <laughs> I haven't been doing much for Earth Day outside, but I did repot a bunch of plants in the house. Not a bunch, it was two <laughs> plants in the house this year, so um, I have been being nice to the plants. Uh, welcome if you are new. If you are returning, I thank you as always, and either way, I hope you enjoy and continue to watch the show. The show is on iTunes, YouTube, the website DelusionalNetter.com, as well as the Ravelry group. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are absolutely horrible today. So there's probably going to be a lot of throat clearing and icky noises, and I apologize in advance. I'm also on Instagram as Delusional Netter. And if you are not a member of the Ravelry group, come on over and join that. Revelations of Delusional there. And on to Declaration. So what's been going on? So today, first of all, I wanted to point out that I do have other hoodies other than Doctor Who. Except this is the only one. <laughs> um, I just got this one the other day. Um, today, I have been not doing a whole heck of a lot. Yesterday, I had off also and I got some stuff done, but this morning, um, a few days ago, I called a plumber to come check out our boiler. We have one of those, I'm sure I've mentioned it before because I hate it, and I think I was making noises before and I said something. We have one of those combo hot water heater on demand thingies that's also the hot force water heat for the house kind of thing. So it's making this god awful noise, and it sounded like a bad fan, which it was. Um, so I called a plumber the other day, he came, checked it out, said he had to order the part. I had also called the company to see if it was under warranty because this stupid boiler is only two and a half years old. And this repair cost me $900. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not under warranty. It's, it's got a 10 year limited warranty, which apparently means limited to everything because I don't know what is actually covered on this 10 years because it doesn't appear to be anything, but whatever. So today I just got up. Um, I was actually still in bed. I heard the phone ring though, and I said to my husband, who just called, and he looked on the caller ID and he said the name, and I said, oh, that's the plumber. Um, so I listened to the message. He had the part and he could come today, which is what he thought anyway the other day when he came. I told him I had today off, so we had planned on it as long as he had the part. So I just spent, he didn't get here until like 12.20, which was totally fine. I told him I'd be home all day, and, and he had, said he had a job before he came here, so that was totally fine, but I, I, can't, I hate waiting. <laughs> you feel like your whole day, like you don't want to start anything, you don't want to do anything. It was kind of good because I cleaned the house because I figured if I got interrupted doing that, I didn't care. But like I didn't want to read a book or watch a movie, you know, if, if he would show up any minute now. So um, I did clean up the house a little bit and dusted some things I haven't dusted in a long time, so that was good. Um, and that's all I've been doing today. Then I ran out and filled my truck's gas tank and ran through the car wash and now it's raining. That, that about figured. I knew it was going to rain and I really didn't care. I wanted to wash it but it had been really cold for a little while so I didn't want to wash it because sometimes um, when I wash it when it's really really cold if then I park it in the driveway the rear wheels like freeze up like the brakes freeze so I didn't I was waiting. Plus it snowed again the last time I recorded, so I was waiting for that as well because I figured it would get some crud on it from the road from that. But I wanted to rinse that off, that's why I wanted to wash it, so I don't really care that it's raining. I really just wanted to rinse the salt and stuff off of it, so that's fine and that's done. And now we're recording. And then after that I have some more errands to do and, not errands, chores, I'm not leaving the house again. But the whole point of this was that when I got the phone call this morning I just quickly hopped in the shower and threw my hair up. So that's why it looks like this. And I do not have time now. It is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I do not have time now to fix up my hair and stuff for the podcast. So this is just how it's going to go. Um, the other day, my mom and I went. I had seen this place before up the street. I do some shopping up in New Hampshire. And it's called the to co Oh, God. This is going to go well. The Cozy Tea Cart. <laughs> and it's... um. It's like a little cafe, but it's also a shop, and they have lots of tea. And I had lots of teas. They had a menu that was like six pages long, and the size of like a restaurant menu. They must have like 80 to 100 different types, maybe not that many. I, I don't know, they might. They have a ton of teas, and like the owner's like a tea expert, you know, kind of thing. And so, um, 
we went there and had tea and cake and it was fabulous oh it was so good and they're like so into the tea like they even set a timer on the table and it was sand and there were different colors of sand and she told us which one we wanted the white one because this particular tea we ordered jasmine tea that we ordered steeps for it was like four minutes or something three or four minutes or something like that so like i don't know about you but when i'm at home it says steep for whatever i like boil the water in the tea kettle put the tea in the cup put the water in it and then i go walk away for a while and come back i probably steep it for like 15 minutes i don't even know but apparently you know that's not really how you're supposed to do it <laughs> It was delicious. It was the best tea I've ever had. Ever. It was fabulous. Um, so I'm really excited about that because that's only up the street and they sell teas and I love teas. I bought some pomegranate to bring home and it was, oh my god, it's so good. It is so good. And they have all these flavors and they have like every type. They have white tea, green tea, oolong tea, black tea. It's everything. It's crazy. So that was a lot of fun and I will definitely go back there again. Um, what else? I think that's all I had on my list for declarations. That's all that's been going on. There were no questions in the Ask Away thread. I've already answered everything. So if you do have a question, pop over there and put that in the board. And I will answer it on the next episode. So now we're on to Revelations. I have an F.O. and he's awesome. So I mentioned before that I was going to do the Traveling Monsters again this year, so I had to make a monster. Doesn't really have to be a monster. It has to be a Rebecca Danger pattern. So I have two of her books. I have the big book of monsters and I have 50 Yards of Fun. And I've wanted to make this one for a while since I got 50 Yards of Fun. And he's the little luchador. And he is awesome. I'm going to have to make more. Um, I'm going to have to make one for my husband. So this is the little luchador and it's an excellent pattern. And I did the legs two at a time, which is super simple if you follow her instructions. And it, it makes it just so much, it's like seamless when you go to start the body and stuff. It's great. And then the arms you pick up, most of the ones in 50 Yards of Fun, she has you pick up for arms and legs. So you don't have to sew anything. The only thing I had to sew on him was um, the hole here where the needles were for the body. And that's how a lot of the 50 Yards of Fun patterns are. There's just a quick like whip stitch seam on the bottom somewhere and the rest of it's all done and it, the way everything decreases you just you know finish your decreases and then cut the yarn and pull it through um, and close up the hole and then you're done and he has a separate cape with an I-cord tie so this is completely separate and comes off um, that was in seed stitch I think that is which I hate by the way but after I did the master hand hair program level one I'm actually really good at seed stitch so <laughs> um, that's his little cape, and that's him. So he's really cool. I'm really happy with him. And I have named him, since he's a luchador, I have named him Feroz Guerrero, and that means fierce warrior in English. <laughs> so I thought that was a fitting name, and I'm super excited about him. And I also, you don't have to, it's just if you want to, but you can send a little notebook along with your, your guy, and um, then the people who have him for the visit can write notes in what they did, you know, whatever. So I was trying to look, because it's only five visits, and most notebooks you can find, little notebooks are like, you know, 50, 80, 100 pages, and that's just, it's just ridiculous. So I was like, you have a ton of paper crafting supplies, you idiot. Why don't you just make a little notebook? So I did that this morning while I was waiting for the plumber. Um, so I just took a piece of thick cardstock patterned paper, and some plain uh, drawing paper and cut it to size and I just stapled the binding it's fine it's just something that people can write notes in about them so that's done and I'm happy about that because I kept looking for one every time I went to a store and like I said there were so many pages it was ridiculous because really I need like five <laughs> to ten pages for this notebook I don't need this huge notebook it's just silly so he's got his little travel journal now so that's all set uh, the other thing I've been working on was Sophie's Universe and that's that crochet uh, blanket and I finished the last clue that I think you saw it on um, I should have put in a marker well right now I'm starting the blue I'm starting clue 5 so the blue is starting clue 5 so I finished clue 4 and I also did do the optional flowers which are these ones here um, so that's going very well and I will just continue on with that Unfortunately, I find whatever reason, I think it's the way I do it, because if I watch other people crochet, I can clearly see that I do it completely differently 
not differently, but I just really exaggerate the motions and I have like a death grip on it. Um, I hurt my wrist all the time when I crochet, but on clue five, what I've been doing is like one side and then put it down and go do something else. And then the next day do the other side. It's going to take forever, but when I hurt my wrist, then I don't pick it up for like months. So that's at least something. Um, the Moab shawl that was in the hand spun that I did out of a loop bump. And I just picked that up the other day as well and just kept going. It's I'm just growing the body, so it's just going to keep going and going until I get to the edge. But I did work on it some um, since I showed it to you last, so that's that. And that's my loop bump. And Sugar Plum, very fitting name. And my stripy socks I've worked on also. I have one heel done, so I finished the heel on one foot. And... Uh, went on to the leg. So I, I did do the fish slips kiss heel like I thought I would do. And I love that heel. There's no holes. There's no gaps. Even on this side there was like a tiny hole and it wasn't even really a hole. It's just that I pulled that stitch too far on the very edge and kind of stretched it out. But after I did a couple of rounds and then I just kind of poked around in there and tightened up some of the stitches um, with a crochet hook, now there's no hole at all. So I do love that heel. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is Barocco socks. I don't know what colorway. I think they just give them numbers. Um, so the other sock, I am right before the heel. So I have to do the heel on the other sock now. And then um, those should be done. Whatever. They're just stocking out socks from whenever. There's no deadline. Except that I started them in February. So I would like to get them done soon so that I can start some other socks. Uh, the Knitters Guild Association Master Hand Knitter Program Level 2, they changed the instructions. Which is fine. Because what happens is, if you don't finish the program within one year of the date that you got the instructions, you need to go by the new instructions if there are revisions, which there has been now. Then they're not unreasonable. I saw a woman on the board who said, oh my god, my package is ready to mail three days after you guys changed the instructions. And they were like, no, you're fine. <laughs> Send it in. We're not going to make you redo the whole thing because of three days. You know, they're very reasonable. So I'm actually kind of good, glad that I did let it sit for a while because now I can just start over fresh with the new instructions and not have to worry about anything. Um, because they don't revise them often. It's every couple to several years. So I shouldn't have a problem if I get this done in a couple years. I should be fine. Um, I did though, I'm happy. I finally started the history report. So I at least have like two paragraphs in the history report. And that was the biggest problem was just getting it started. You know how those things are where if you, you just, that's your biggest hurdle is to get it started. Once I got it started, it's starting to flow. Um, and obviously you can do whatever you want. You can do the swatches first, yada, yada, but they suggest that you do it in a particular manner because that's what has worked best for most people. And they suggest you get the reports out of the way first and then focus on the swatches, you know, so I'm trying to do that and we'll see how that goes, but so far so good because at least I finally got it started and like I said, now that they've changed the instructions, I am good to go because it doesn't matter because I really didn't do anything yet, so that's fine. Um, the February lady sweater, I, this is supposed, that was a big sigh, right? This is, <laughs> this is supposed to be my finish for April that you guys picked, which it might still, but maybe not. Might be April and May. Um, I just have two sleeves, but they're very, um, it's not tedious. It's the singles yarn is what the problem is. I don't like knitting with singles yarn. This is Malabrigo, and it's an absolutely lovely yarn. There's nothing wrong with it. The way I knit, I untwist it as I knit. So it's, I have to knit a little bit differently when I knit with a single yarn, and I can't tension it like I normally do, so it seems tedious to me because of that, because I have to pay attention, otherwise I'll unwind the single and just have like roving. So I did pick it up again though, and I have knit on the sleeve because I think before when I showed it, it was like right here, or some, you know, I did do quite a, quite a few repeats. I also had a duh moment because I kept messing up this lace pattern and it's the simplest lace pattern ever. Two of the rows are knit, so right there it's 50% of it super easy, right? And the other two rows are super easy as well. I think the problem I was having is that the February Lady Sweater is a written pattern and I obviously can follow written instructions, that's I can read, but I much prefer charts 
as a visual, I can just look at it and look at the knitting. I can read knitting, I guess is what I should be saying, because it's just easier for me to just look and not even read. Just look and compare. So, uh, the smart part of my brain said, hey, stupid, why don't you chart it yourself? <laughs> so, uh, I grabbed a piece of graph paper the other day and charted it, and amazingly, I have yet to mess up the pattern since I have a little chart now instead of written instructions. Um, and I don't know either if it's because I like to listen to like audiobooks or watch a podcast or something while I'm knitting, so I think that's another problem with words and you know, listening to words, where the chart is just a visual thing, where it doesn't matter what I'm listening to because my eyeballs are the only thing working off the chart. So that's going better since I've charted it, though. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's a little bit of a slow knit because of the single yarn and the way that I knit and untwist the yarn. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. String theory. I am still knitting on the Into the World Merino on the Road Bug, and that is going great. I did do a big chunk the other day. I have been knitting, maybe not knitting, spinning, maybe every like three days. I try to do it every day, but it just doesn't work out that way. So, um, but I have been doing it like every two to three days for like half an hour or more. So that's going, and I'm seeing some progress in the um, the roving disappearing out of the bag. So that's good. Uh, scrolls. I do not have a book review for this episode, but we had a giveaway for Masterpiece Knits from Dragonfly Fibers, and I did the quick random number generator before I started recording. So the winner is Noodle Girl 88 and that is Shell. So congratulations. I will let Jocelyn know, and she will gift you a copy. Um, testaments. So, do you remember I was thinking about this before I recorded today? The last time I bought something, not huge, but you know, splurged a little bit on something, and I don't even remember what I bought, but uh, then I had a large expense, like the, I think it was the power steering pump in my truck. Well, before I knew that my boiler was going to cost $900 to repair, I bought some spindles. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently I shouldn't buy anything ever because a uh, big expense comes up right after. I can go like months and not buy yarn or spindles and nothing happens <laughs> as soon as I buy something. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I told you, it's pretty bad. I'm actually like up at night this week coughing with this dry nasty cough. And it is allergies because I have like no cold or flu symptoms and it's strictly just like dry throat, runny nose, icky allergy stuff. So, I saw a Phil Powell spindle on D-Stash. I need to stop looking at that D-Stash thread again. There's a D-Stash thread on one of the spinning boards on Ravelry where individuals sell spindles that they, they don't like or they don't want anymore or they have an emergency like their boiler, <laughs> right? So they need money and they sell their spindles. So I've wanted a Phil Powell crystal spindle for a long time. But the problem is they're usually 12, 12, 11 or 12 inch long spindles, and I don't like that. I like them in between 9 and 10 inches. And this lovely is 9 something. I think it's 9 and 3 quarters, but it's perfect. It's the same height as a lot of my Merkwood spindles, so it's awesome. And I love the wood. It's ebony wood, and the crystal is a bluish purple, which is fantastic. It, it is a really pretty crystal. I don't know if it's even going to show up well on the camera, but... Um, depending on how you look at it, it's like a bluish, a light blue. It's almost like a tanzanite color, I would say. Um, but it's lovely and it spins awesome and it's a really good height for me. So I'm super excited about that, finding that in the D stash because all the ones that are for sale on his Etsy shop too are always like 11 or 2. I don't know how this lady found this one unless it was a custom order because I've never seen one that height. The other one I got, John Galen does Tockley's, beaded Tockley's, and he had a big sale because he wanted to move some inventory out to uh, be able to get new stuff into his shop. So he had a bunch of spindles for like $17, $19. So I got this one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pink, but I like this kind of magenta-y pink, so that was fine. And it was a purple spindle. He has lots of different colors and different beads. Um, so the tackle itself is a nice purple, there's a nice maple whorl, and it's got a nice bead on it, so it's really cool. It's a nice little spindle, and it spins really, really good. Um, I'm happy too, because I already have a tackle. I have like your standard, you know, disc tackle. I did want another tackle that was like the same height and stuff, so that's cool, because then if I do cotton and I want to ply it, 
I have two spindles to spin from. That's really just a huge excuse to buy more spindles. <laughs> you really don't need one. You know, you know how it works. Um, so those are my goodies that I get recently. Uh, intentions, delusional knitter designs. I do still have the mitts that are in test knitting. They're almost finished up, so that pattern should be available soon. I have to get good photos, though. You know what I'd really like to do, which probably will not happen? I would love to go to the New England Aquarium and get pictures of it in front of the penguins. That would rock. I don't know if that's going to happen. Maybe. Who knows? It might. But that just means also, though, that the mitts might not be out for a couple of months. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Or maybe I can take pictures, and then if I'm lucky, I'll get really good pictures later. I don't know. I'll have to see how it goes. That's a huge problem with designing, by the way, is getting really good pattern photos that really show it off. And it's just, it's very difficult. So the pattern writing is super easy. Knitting it up is super easy. It's those stupid photos that kill me every time. Um, Harrisay, coupon codes. I have a thread on the Ravelry group for coupon codes. There's a couple of vendors that have given us codes recently that are good until like the end of April or through May. So go and check those out. Um, yarn dyers and bag makers are in there. Um, Hogwarts, nothing much else is going on there. I did enter my luchador. Uh, Sock Madness, a couple more patterns have come out. I will knit them eventually, but they're just not something I want to knit right now. Like, one was a really awesome cabled one, but I was just not in the mindset for it. A lot of the people on my cheerleading team were not, so that's why we're on the cheerleading team <laughs> and not competing. Um, Epic Knit Along, I have prizes to show you. I got some prizes from some wonderful people, and um, Shannon from Supernatural Yarns sent a sock yarn blank. <clears throat> I'm going to have to take a break in a minute, because my throat is not good. I don't want to take it out of the bag since it's going to somebody else, and I have cat fur all over my shirt. So it's this awesome color. Um, what was the name of it? Anyway, Strumpet, and it's a sparkly base, so it's got sparkles in it too. So that was awesome. And then I got the lovely Daisy from Art Institute. As usual, she's donated several times and she always is so gracious. Um, sent me two bags. There's this awesome alpaca bag in her standard bag format, which is really thick material. It's got some nice hearts in there and the thick zipper and the nice pull. That's what I love about her bags. And then um, she sent me a drawstring one as well, which is the Wizard of Oz. And I love this gingham. It's just like Dorothy's dress. It's awesome. So we also have this one as well. So we have two bags from Daisy. And then Prairie Bag Works also sent me a bag. I showed the bag I have of theirs before with the cats on it that I really liked. So Sandy from Prairie Bag Works sent me... A bag and a DPN holder, so matching DPN holder that I need to um, lint roll before I send it to anybody. <laughs> Sorry, there's cat fur on it. The cats don't even come in here. I don't know how cat fur gets on things in this room. So there's a nice DPN needle case, and then a lovely, awesome summery bag. Um, and they have the ones. There's pocket inside. There's two pockets inside in the in this fabric that coordinates and they've also got this awesome, I showed this on my bag and I love it, um, measuring tape inside. So if you're doing a small project like socks or mitts or something, and this is an accurate one, I checked it with a ruler, um, you have your measuring tape right there inside your bag. So that's really cool. It's a nice drawstring, it's got a nice thick ribbon on it, so really awesome bag. So thanks to Sandy. and. So those are the prizes we have so far, and I will be doing the April prizes soon. Um, I will do them by the end of the month, I promise, for the third, uh, first quarter. Um, so, yeah. Awesome! So check out their shops, too, and some of them have supplied coupon codes in that thread, like I said. So check that out. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Traveling Monsters, I already showed the luchador, and I'm great. I have my journal, I have my guy done, I'm good, because the first mailing date is like May 2nd. Uh, new podcasts. I don't have any new podcasts to talk about today. I do have Ravelry patterns today, and I'm actually my camera's going to run out of time in like three minutes, so I will break here and come back for the rest of the show in just a sec. Okay, we're back. 
I did also want to show, um, I know I show spindles all the time, and a lot of you are probably like, does she actually use these spindles? <laughs> I do. The problem was, if you've been watching for a while, you probably remember, I was going to physical therapy for a couple of months um, for my shoulder, and supported spinning really bothered it, and a lot of it has to do with the way I do it and stuff like that, and also that I overdo things all the time. So, I did pick them up again. I'm out of physical therapy. Everything's a lot better. I still have some issues, but nothing like I did. Because um, he even, you know, they, they come up with things that you just don't even think of. Like, he had me bring my pillow in. And I never even really realized, well, first of all, until he mentioned it, I never realized that I had pillows, like, straight up on the wall. Because I would read before I went to bed, and then I would put the Kindle away in the nightstand, and I would just roll over and go to sleep with my neck completely bent like this. I never even realized that. So he had me bring a pillow in, and I also noticed that there was a huge dent in the middle from the cat. So <laughs> my pillow went like this. So if I put it flat, then it was even worse the other way. So on his recommendation, I got a new pillow, and I only sleep on the one pillow so that my neck is straight, or mostly straight, and uh, my neck doesn't hurt anymore when I get up. So, <laughs> And the other thing I was doing a lot at work that I never realized is I would put the phone like this, and I would talk while I was writing. So now um, I make sure I stay up straight, and I just hold the phone like this, and I write. So stupid things like that, but they make a huge difference, and they're things that are really hurting you if you don't realize that you do that all the time. I still, he even told me, my head is just like always like this, that's why my neck always hurts. So that's another thing, I have to I have to realize when I start doing this that I have to put my head straight, you know? But um, it made me more aware of that and I have been, you know, my shoulders are straight, I try to keep my head straight and pay attention to that and as soon as I start falling I realize it now and, and sit up straight so it makes a huge difference. But supported spinning bothers my shoulder. Because you're doing a long draw and you're pulling out like this. So when I used to support and spin, I would do it for a long time, like half an hour or more, and I would be doing this and doing this and doing this, and I would kill my shoulder. So what I do now is I just break off some fiber from the bat, you know, that's like two chunks, that's maybe 15, 20 minutes worth of spinning, and I put that on the desk, and then I tell myself, when you're done spinning that, you're done, and you need to put the spindles away and do something else and you can go back to it later but not right away and that's been working out well because I have picked them up a couple of times and I haven't had any pain afterwards or as soon as I notice my shoulders starting to get tight or sore or fatigued I stop and I put them away and that's working out very well so this was a bat from Fiber Nymph and she calls them fluffy bumps of joy which is just awesome and I had been spinning this a long time ago it's probably been like a year on two of my Merkwood spindles. Um, this one I picked up the other day, so I spun some more on that one. And um, so I do actually use them. But <laughs> I hadn't been for some time because of the shoulder problem, but um, I am picking them up again. I'm just taking it really slow so I don't hurt my shoulder again. So now we are on to Ravelry patterns. I just thought of that when I took a little break to reset the camera. I was like, I show spindles all the time and never any spinning on them. All right, what do we got? We have Gnome Nuggets. That is a Rebecca Danger pattern that is free. And it's super cute. I'm going to have to make some of these guys up. So they're little gnomes. <clears throat> they're really, really cute. She has a couple other free ones. She has a Monster Chunk. She has a Bunny Nugget. Um, these are ones, all these little ones, like the Nugget ones, they don't have like extra appendages. Like the bunnies have ears, but they don't really have, they're more of a Nugget. That's probably why she calls them a Nugget. They don't have um, arms and legs and things. So that takes, you know, leftover worsted weight yarn. And so it's super fun. The other one I found is the Fancy Zebra. That's by Escape Trico. And it is free, and it's a really, really cool cowl. You can clearly see why it's called Fancy Zebra. Obviously, you could do it in any colors you wanted to, but those colors are really cool. And that one takes, I think it's fingering weight. Sport. It takes sport weight. And the other one I have for you, which I got it for free when it first came out. It was free, but that was like two weeks ago, but now it's $7, although I would have paid for it anyway because it's really cool. You can do a DK version or a fingering weight version. And it's called a howl because it's kind of a hat and a cowl. But it's really cool. I really like that. And so that's with the hat portion up. 
so I'll show you you can also wear it as a cowl I like that that's really cool it looks like a really comfortable fun hat <clears throat> cowl howl um let's see that's our Ravelry pattern so I have my bullet journal for those of you that are interested in that type of thing, um, I did find, I, you know, you think of things when you're out or you're sitting at work or whatever. I have a little Moleskine, a tiny one, like a pocket one, that's in my purse. So I use that for lists of things. Like if I want to watch a movie or, you know, there's some songs I want to download and things like that, I'll just scribble them in that one. Or groceries. <clears throat> I was thinking of like menu planning the other day while I was at work. So I just scribbled down some things I wanted to get at the grocery store, and it's good because then I can just refer back to it and not sit here going, what was I thinking about getting? So that's pretty cool. Uh, I never thought to do that. It's just simple and stupid. Um, the other thing I did in my bullet journal, I don't know if I showed this page before, but I was doing, I found some cool things on Pinterest. So you could do like little bookcases with the books that you read. So I had done that, but I was having a lot of trouble titling the banner I had put at the top because I was afraid I was going to mess it up. <clears throat> you know, because doing the, the lettering, I was afraid I would mess it up. It's an ink, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or do something really dumb like misspell books. Because I was so intent on getting the lettering right that I would probably misspell a word. I found some really cool stickers at Walmart the other day, and that solved that problem. So that's my bookcase there with the books that I finished and I was excited about that with the stickers because now that's solved. Um, these sound like really big problems I have, don't they? <laughs> the other thing I was working on was developing a weekly spread because I don't need one. I don't have children. I don't have a lot of places to go. I don't have a lot of appointments, but sometimes it's good. Like I had the plumber earlier in the week and today, so I wanted to, you know, test that out and try that out. So I think I developed a weekly spread that I'm happy with. And I really, the task list, like, I don't need tasks per day because I really only run errands, go to the grocery store, and do things on my day off. So I just need a list, and then on my two days off, I just need to get those things done, and that's it. It's really, it's pretty simple. So, um, but I think this will work, and I'm happy with this. Uh, I might change it up a bit because I work a four-on-two-off schedule, so I might start doing a six-day weekly spread instead of a seven, you know, calendar day weekly spread. I don't know. I'll have to see how that goes. But I've been having fun with that. I do also have, um, that one's about halfway through, that book. Um, and I keep finding new things to do with bullet journaling, so I think it's probably not going to last the rest of the year. And I wanted to try, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Lectrum, Lectrum. People rave about these books. People love Moleskine. People love these. Uh, so I just figured I would get one of these and give it a try. I do like the fact that it's a little bit bigger than the Moleskine, um, size-wise, because I write pretty big. So it is <clears throat> does give you a little bit more space um, to write in. And this one also I like. I don't know if I think Moleskine comes in dotted, but this is dotted instead of uh, squares. Instead of a grid, it's dots, which is kind of cool because if you're doing, you know, artsy things or drawing on it or something, I think the square grid kind of is a little distracting and you can see it, whereas the dots really blend into the paper. But they're great because if you need a grid type of a thing, the dots are there for you to follow. So we'll see how that one goes, but I think I will like that book a little bit better. I've also heard, they're also, the uh, pages are already numbered. So you don't have to number the pages. And there's a built-in index in the front. So you don't have to, I mean, it's not really a big deal. You just write the index in the front of the mole scheme, but there's already one that's lined um, in that one. So that's pretty cool. It also has two bookmarks instead of one. Like the mole scheme has one bookmark. That one has two. I mean, it's just a little different. It's got a few more options that are a little different. So um, we'll see how that one goes when I start doing that one. And Delusional Jabber, Arts and Crafts. I have been doing other things. And they're fun. So, <laughs> um, I think it was about a year ago, I got a book on Zentangling. And I finally did a tile, because Zentangle, you can do on anything. Like, you can do it in the bullet journal, you can do it on a calendar, you can just doodle on a piece of paper, you can do whatever you want. But the actual Zentangles are little tiles. And so I made one the other day, and it was super fun. 
And I just did it while I was listening to an audiobook, and it was really fun and relaxing, and it's just cool. It's really fun. It's a lot of fun, because there's no mistakes. You know, you're not trying to draw, like, a face or a house or something that is recognizable and has a certain structure that you have to follow. It's just repetitive doodle patterns, so it's a lot of fun. The other thing I don't like, well, I shouldn't say I don't like, um, I have a thing with dirty hands. I wash my hands, I don't know how many times a day. Like, I have to put lotion on all the time because I kind of have a crazy thing about hands. And, um, I even have, like, wet wipes in my purse and in my truck. Because if I have sticky hands, it drives me absolutely bananas. Probably why I don't have children. Um, <laughs> so, the pencil, you, you shade with a pencil, and then you're supposed to smudge it with your finger. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I had to get a napkin. And I smudged it with a napkin. <laughs> I can't get it. Ah. I don't know. It's, there's got to be a name for this thing. Sticky hands? I have a sticky hand. Phobia. It's not really a phobia, but I just cannot stand the sticky hand. I can't stand it. Like, I can't... I have to have lotions that when you put the lotion on, it like immediately soaks into your skin. I can't have the greasy. I can't have anything on my hands ever. They always have to be, and they're usually a little dry because of that, but I usually put lotion on before I go to bed. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe some of you have this too. Please tell me I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> I don't like the sticky hands, or the greasy hands, or the anything hands. Um, let me see. A lot of you probably are like that, though, if you're knitters, because you can't knit with sticky hands. You can't knit with chocolate on your finger or peanut butter. It just doesn't work. Um, reading. I finished Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Oh, I said it that time. And that was awesome. I will probably read the other two books, but there are a couple other things I was reading right now at the moment. So, um, but that was really good. It was a really cool book. If you've never heard about it, but essentially what the author did was, um, he took like vintage old photographs, you know, the weird ones where you look at it and you're like, what is going on in this picture? Or why is that so creepy? Like weird things. And wrote a story, like, based around it. Like, if you look at these old photographs, you think, I'm like, what is the, who is this child? What are they doing? What is that toy they have? You know, what, what is this thing? And so he made characters out of these, and the pictures are in the book, made characters and stories about them and backgrounds, and it's really awesome. It was a really good story. I'm excited for the movie. I'm also excited that Eva Green is in it because I love her. Um, I kind of have a girl crush on her. I also finished Ink Heart. That was an audiobook I was listening to, and that was awesome. And I started Ink Spell, which is the next one. Which, by the way, so Ink Heart was a movie, which I haven't seen. And Brendan Fraser was in it. And I'm assuming, because of that, they asked him to narrate Ink Spell, the second book. And when the woman who did Ink Heart was really good, Lynn Redgrave. And when I saw Brendan Fraser was narrating the second one, I was like, I don't know what I think about that. I like him as an actor, I really do. And But I was like, mm, I'm not so sure he's going to be a great narrator. He is fantastic. Fantastic. He puts so much emotion into the words, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> for example, like there was one where a boy, I don't want to give away the story, but a boy is running, like for his life, he's afraid, something's growling in the woods and he is running. And as he's narrating it, I'm actually getting, like, panicked over here because he's putting so much emotion into it that it was amazing. And even, like, stupid sentences, like, there's a guy in a tavern and he's, you know, peering around at all the people. Well, as it, he changes the inflection of his voice. So instead of saying, he sat at the table and peered around at the other patrons. He says it like this. He peered around at all the other... Like, it's really... It's amazing. I'm really impressed with his narration. It's fabulous. Uh, the Walking Dead comics, I don't think I've read much more on. And I'm also reading... I don't know if I mentioned it before. They Who Fell. Oh, I don't remember the author's name. It's like a post-apocalyptic story about angels. Like, actual angels from heaven who fell... And so now they're down on Earth, so the Maker, as they call him, doesn't want anything to do with them anymore. He casts them out of heaven. And when they fell, a lot of them got burned from, I don't know, when you fall from heaven, apparently you get burned. Um, so a lot of them are, like, scarred and messed up, and that really 
makes them a little crazy and they're you know much more powerful than humans physically and so they dominated them and like tore down everything so they're up in what's called the perch is where they live it's a huge tower because <clears throat> they can fly so and then they have human servants but if you work there it's kind of better than outside because outside you're fending for yourself but if you work there you're at their whim like one of them could just you drop a spoon and then you know chop your head off you know kind of thing things like so it's it's very interesting it's really good um so then there's people outside of there who are still fighting for earth and trying to reclaim it from the angels and kill them except they're like you know you can't really shoot them because the bullets just kind of bounce off and you can't fight them because they'll just like throw you through a wall so you really need some serious uh, weapons to fight them like bombs and a lot of time bombs will just stun them won't actually kill them the only thing that really kills them is a lot of them have swords made of flame and uh, if you get one of their swords you can kill them kind of thing so um, I think I'm about halfway through that book but it's pretty good and it's a series there's a couple more so I'll probably uh, finish those at some point because it is a good story and the writing's pretty good TV Fear the Walking Dead is on now um, my husband and I like that one a lot too. It's not it's not The Walking Dead. Well see, I also don't compare it to The Walking Dead because it's not The Walking Dead. So it's just, it's a different TV show, it's different people, it's different. It's different. Um, Nick though, the character Nick, we loved him from the beginning. After this last episode, we love him even more. He's awesome. Uh, Bates Motel, we're pretty much caught up on I think. There might be one episode we haven't watched so far, but I still love that one. That's another one my husband watches. That's about it. He doesn't really watch anything else. Uh, Better Call Saul, I gotta catch up on, because I think the season finale was the other day, and I'm behind a few episodes. And I don't know if I mentioned it, because I don't remember when it was, but I finished the People vs. O.J. Simpson, that miniseries that was on, and it was really good. I had said that before, but I was really impressed with it, and it was very interesting, and I liked it a lot. Uh, movies, I haven't watched any movies since I recorded last, I don't think. And, uh, Jabber, what else do we have? I don't think we have anything else. I gotta go do some stuff now. I gotta go do my laundry. I waited because the plumber was coming, so I figured they were gonna have to shut the water down, so, um, I waited on that, so I gotta do my laundry and some cooking. <clears throat> I was gonna make a spaghetti casserole. Again, plumber, gas, <laughs> furnace, and figured they were gonna shut the gas off, so I didn't want to put anything in the oven. Um, so that's all that's left for my day. And I think that's all that I got for this episode. So thank you so much for joining me, and happy knitting and spinning.